Let's see if I can get this fixed real quick. There we go. All right, well, welcome back. We are going to continue working on this power supply. Obviously, we're redoing a lot of work right now. I'm trying to figure out how to supply. I gave the idea of using op amps last time. We're trying to figure out how to supply enough current at high voltage. Not that high, like up to 24 volts. Uh, but that's true, proving to be trickier than expected. Let's get this music started again. So we have to find something that'll be capable of doing this. And there are some neat parts here, uh, but they're very expensive. Like this whole board is going to get very pricey if we can't, because some of the components are really expensive. So if we can't start bringing the cost down, we're going to have issues. All right, let's see what this one can do. to 60 volt supply range. This actually looks like it'd be pretty good, but uh, I was looking for a maximum voltage or something. Interesting stuff. Well, all right, so it looks like there's definitely stuff that can do what we need it to, yeah, whatever. But it's either really expensive, or if it is cheap, it's because it's, you know, you have to buy so many at a time. I'm gonna try, here, hang on. I'm gonna try Mouser, see what we can come up with. All right, let's see. We want in stock. I'm not confident that this will give us something that DigiKey doesn't have. Just that uh, we will, uh, or maybe we'll see something, but I'm, I'm not confident about it. One hundred amps, geez. Two hundred and seventy seven items. Well, that's optimistic. Can we get anything through hole? How many does that leave us with? One hundred and twenty two. 
That's better. There might be an option here. <laughs> Dev kits and stuff. All right. What is this? NJR. A company I've ever dealt with. Part of the reason I'm doing this too is just to see if there's anything that um, the other... Uh, um, see if DigiKey is like filtering something out that I didn't realize. Max is 32 volts, minimum of 4.5. Current. All right, but I need to know what the max output current per channel is. It needs to be pretty high. Two volts, twenty nine point five volts. That's great on the voltage. Ah, uh, shoot, but what is the output current capable of? Excuse me. Output short current protection. That's interesting and cool. It'd be kind of cool if we can, like seeing how this has four channels on it, if we can, um, you know, run all four circuits off this one thing. But uh, I don't... The part doesn't look like it's going to be able to supply that. Like it's just, it's not, doesn't have a heat sink or anything. And what we're going to be asking it to do would definitely require one. I would think at least. Output supply current or opening. No, where was it? We selected this. You know, due to the cost of this part, even if it is one amp over all channels, that's fine. Like, we can just um, uh, connect them together kind of thing. It's just more about cost at this point. Uh, where is it? Hmm. 
weird. Because we definitely had that selected somewhere. Hold on. This one, output current per channels. Where is that? I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> it just might take a little while. Output current per channel here, okay. We said one amp greater than or equal to that. Yep, so it selects everything below. So just to verify, we're doing this correctly. And then when we sorted by price, we got to here. Output current per channel. It's blank. So I guess it just defaults to if it's blank, it just it gets included anyway. And then looking at the data sheet. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's able to actually drive that much, like 20 milliamps. It's hard to tell, though. So I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> Got my hopes up there. That's all right. I'll put current per channel. Ugh. So how do I convince them to... Don't include blank. Greater than... Oh. And then, and then take that one out. Ah. Oops. Okay. I can do this. There we go. That takes out quite a few of them. Okay. So now we'll probably only have expensive ones. I was getting my hopes up there for a second. Yep, six dollars for this one. And I think that's the same one we were looking at the other one. TLE two thirty one I N E four. Yep. This one right here. And I believe this is single channel, so yeah, because it's syncing and outputting quite a bit. Oh, I hate to have to use so many of these, but I don't think we have a choice. <laughs> I 
All right, well, one of the original plans I talked about was that we could just put, like, solder, like, two of the circuits on there or something just to test to make sure it works. So I think that's what we're going to have to do here. We're just going to have to use this part and accept the fact that it's going to cost uh, 26 bucks to buy four of them. I'm just worried because of the price of it, where it's going to be like 20 bucks for the PCBs, $26 for these, $20 for the transformer. Uh, I don't think the bridge rectifier is that cheap either because it's high current. Like we're very quickly accelerating, you know, over the $100 mark for this whole project. So, but I don't see an option here. So I think we use these, and then last time I was seemed really committed to using the um, um, what is it? The switching regulator. Sorry, this thing. And I think I'm gonna not do that and just use a linear regulator because there's no reason to have this complexity. And I think a linear one, it'd just be easier to use. So I think we'll do that. So first things first, let's see if, um, let's get this op amp in here. And then we'll find a new regulator and then we can start connecting those things up. But if anyone finds a cheaper one that can do this, I can drive an amp of current and go up to like 24 volts or whatnot. I guess it'd have to be capable of going a little higher than that just in case, but. Wait. Oh, okay, so this is up to 44. Okay, so we can do quite a lot with that. We'll probably keep it around 30. Since we're coming in 36 from the um, uh, transformer, we figure at least a volt of drop across the bridge rectifier. So we're down to 35. And then we got to go through another. We have to go through the regulator, and that's going to drop probably a couple volts, which bring us down to like thirty-three. So we might as well aim for thirty at high draw. That way we can uh, and allow it to dip a little bit, so that we can still reach twenty-four volts at the other end. Man, I would love to talk to somebody who actually makes power supplies, so they could tell me like everything I'm doing wrong or not considering. Is there an enable pin on this one? It said something about an enable, so. Compensation network terminals. Are there for all applications. Three state input terminals. TRS2 should be connected to the ground of the circuit generating the three state command. TRS1, two volts above TRS2, placing. Resumes the ring and point it. Oh, it is. Wow, okay. So you can absolutely disable it. That's wild. So let me see a circuit. A full circuit. It's one three state control. For utility band. We're not really going to be doing that. We're just going to be doing a standard non inverting amp. Uh, excuse me. All 
Man, this is going to require quite a lot of parts around it, too. Some big ones, especially these electrolytic caps right here. Oh, those are on the power supply. Okay, the one connected to ground we probably don't need to cap on. I can't wait to see this thing uh, fail miserably as I'm working on it. It's got these diodes set up to absorb like feed, some sort of like oscillation or something as well. Like the blue black ground, nice choice. Thank you. Uh, I like it too. It doesn't look as good right now. I don't have the lighting set up very well, but hopefully I'll get it to look better in the future. Um. Okay. I really need to look at what all these pins are. Let's see, so just so we know, pin one, two versus pin 16 versus the output. Okay, so these capacitors are probably required. The caps connected in zero volts to the negative is probably not required. The ones that are going to the positive probably double is required. The diodes I'm not so sure about. Oh. Ugh. I'm sure I'll find a way to mess this up, but for now, we'll just give it a shot and see what happens. And this is the heat dissipation plane that they want, okay. So I could probably get away with just the basic um, uh, non-inverting amp resistors and then these caps and these caps. It looks like this one is for deep decoupling and this one is for like high frequency noise reduction. All right. Well, what are the chances that it's already made? Oh, wow. <laughs> Got stuff all over the place. All right, can I get lucky? I'm betting not. Oh, it is already made. Look at that. <laughs> well, isn't that convenient? All right, I'll order up four of these, and then we just need to find a voltage regulator.
This probably needs its own sheet. Just because of how obnoxious they are, like how big they are and everything, and all the components we're going to put around them. Yeah. Let's just do that. Add new schematic, and we'll do... Uh, have just amplifiers. It's been a long time since I've gotten lucky and had a part already ready to go. It's a nice change. All right, so got all these together. Um, probably, let's see. Yeah, we'll figure out the rest here in a second. I want to get to this and figure out our uh, voltage regulator situation. We're going to use a linear regulator. Because there are a lot of those. And we're going to need something that can supply quite a lot of current. Like, well, <laughs> I guess it doesn't need to supply. It probably needs to be able to supply 4 amps. It needs to be more than 2.0, whatever the regulator or the transformer can supply. Current output, we need, like, a lot. <laughs> Let's go with three. Three or more. This will severely limit our options, so then we can go from there. All right, we're definitely going to want something through hole, probably. I think these ones like this that have them offset are supposed to go on the edge of a circuit board and like uh, touch each side of it. I think the whole me doing them as through hole things is kind of wrong, but. All right. Voltage output minimum. or voltage output max, actually. Needs to be above 24, probably closer to 30. Ugh. This might be hard, actually. I don't know how close this op amp can get to its... Um... Is it that one? No, it's not that one. Let's get that one off the screen. Get back to... Yeah, this one. All right, we need to figure out what the uh, capabilities of this one is. Because these things can only get so close to their supplies. Like, it can't get all the way down to zero, and it can't get all the way up to 30 volts or whatever we're going to do. So we have to figure out how close we can get. And it's probably a function of the input voltage. At least I think it is.
I guess we try for 30 volts. Well, no. Hmm. All right, let's go by price too. Oh, but we should get rid of anything that has to be bought in bulk. Oh, our voltage input max needs to be like 36 as well. That will affect it. Yeah, it's gonna be 40 or more. Oh uh, yeah, that's gonna be rough to use. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, that's not good. We might have to stick with our current one if we can't. Uh, I don't. I don't think we can use the current one either. I think it's too low as well. Let's remove the current output option. Voltage input max. Okay, that gives us opens up a lot more doors. see what we can get here tiny little things <laughs> all right now let's see what our current options are let's go two amps and up This is a 24 volt, two amp regulator. Ah, oh, come on. We can figure this out. We might be able to go back to using our old um, transformer that we were using. If we use a different, if we're using a different regulator. Sorry for jumping all over the place, but Options got to be considered. Um, let's take this off and add some more in. So 28, right? Yeah. So let's do that. And then voltage output max. We really want it to be like. Twenty eight point five or higher, I guess. All right, so then current. Oh, that leaves only ten.
We got 28 volts coming in. It'll be 27 after. We need to probably keep it about 25 or so. So I need to see what the, how to use it. This looks like the part, but just to make sure we can buy it singly at once, $1.72, okay. Typical dropout, 1.3 volts at five amps. So 27 volts coming in. That sounds amazing. <laughs> So its output has got to be a function of its input as well. And then there's the adjustment. Wow, it's its own kind of op amp, really. It would have been nice to use one, just one of these instead of the amplifiers, but it wouldn't have been possible to um, just to make it work with a digital potentiometer. All right, so we use this part, and then we use our old transformer that we were gonna use, the original one before we switched it. So, maybe I'll get lucky and this part's already made. It won't be that hard to make if not, but. Okay, uh, part. Oops. Oh, it is made. He gets lucky twice. <laughs> All right. So this removes a significant number of parts here as well. And because of the linear regulator, it should be a little smoother on the output. It won't have as much ripple in it. So now the next thing I have to do is I got to fix this transformer again. So we'll just get rid of that. And move that over here. And then part, and this will be in our favorites. I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. All right. Move this, we don't need a ground anymore. Instead, we're back to doing this the dangerous way. I think this <clears throat> kind of goes without saying, but uh, please don't copy what I'm doing unless you first consult with your local electrical engineer because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Which is gonna make this even more wild if it does work. <laughs> All right, this, I think this transformer was a little bit cheaper too. 14A-56-28. Nope, still 20 bucks. <laughs> well, they can never be cheap. Wouldn't want it to be too easy. All right. 
So this becomes DC 28 volts again. Man, this was a really annoying thing to work out. And I know that like there's a lot of um, companies that make power supplies. And one of the things I did notice, I mentioned this before, on those when you turn the knob up, right, and go up the voltage, and they go up to like 30 volts and uh, from 0 to 30. So that's quite a huge range. Not a, a more so than I'm even doing here. And actually, I just need to delete all this. Uh, one thing I didn't I've noticed is that they there's a clicking sound every so often. Like when you get up above like five or six volts, there's a click of a switch uh, or a relay or something turning on or off, and it'll happen again later. And so even though they give you a continuous range of like 30 volts, they're actually separating it into sections and running it with different components and then just switching between them. Each one is adjustable a little bit. Uh, so what I'm trying to do here, where I'm just trying to make the thing adjustable smooth through the whole range without using different circuits, uh, it's really hard to do. And it's not really done a lot in practice. Probably for the reason here where I'm having issues finding components that'll work in these range in those giant ranges. So it makes sense. And so if you have the money for a lot of components, then that's you know the right way to do it, I guess. But we're gonna try it this way. Alright. So we're at 28, 27 coming in probably. We want to be putting out like, I don't know, 25? I guess we can always adjust that. So that's a good thing. We can always change the resistance to adjust it. Twenty six would be ideal, but you know. All right. Um, let me find this data sheet again. Pretty straightforward application circuit. Probably got to buy a heatsink for this thing. This will give me good practice too, because. Um, the lightsaber that I was trying to come up with uses is going to use not high voltage but high current, and so if this explodes or something, then I'll know I'll learn at least a way not to do it. Ten microfarads on both sides. Okay, if that's what you suggest. Oh, I forgot about the super caps that we were buying. Yeah, that's going to be expensive as well. I totally forgot about these things. <laughs> All right, um, it's out of ground port down here. The way we're hooking this thing up, it effectively is an amp. All right, so what's coming in? DC 28 volts. And what's going out? 26? Sure, that sounds good. All right. And then this needs to connect through resistors to ground, and we have to do our math here. So V out is V reference times one plus R2 divided by R1 as by this diagram here. Where R1 is this upper one, R2 is this lower one. They recommend 120 for R1. So what is the, so I guess that's a good idea. So what does that make R2? So if we have 28 volts coming in, uh, I need a calculator.
So 28 volts coming in. Actually, we don't need to do it. We need to do uh, R2 divided by R1. We need to solve for it, actually. So our output needs to be 26. So 26 divided by 28. This doesn't make sense. Hold on. Oh, well, maybe it does. Minus one. And why is it a negative number? Times one twenty. Yeah, something's off here. Five divided by one. Oops. One twenty. Plus one times the rough. Yeah, the rate the way this reads, it reads as if um, it increases the voltage from V ref. What is V ref? Oh. The reference voltage. So VREF doesn't mean what I think it means. It's uh, in the 1.25 volt range. So I'm not understanding. <laughs> Alright, so we should just use 1.25 as our value. So our input or our output is 26 divided by 1.25 equals 20.8 minus 1 times 120, 2,376. Um, what if we use our... Uh, Let's find a common resistor value then around that area. Here, just a sec, I'll pull it up. Chip resistor, surface mount. All right, common values around 23, 2.32, 2.37. I think lower makes a lower voltage. How many in the 2.32 range? Quite a few. Yeah, so the most of them are 2.32. So let's see if we use that. So 2.32 divided by, or sorry, 2320 divided by 120 plus 1 times 1.25. It's 25 and a half volts. Yeah, I think that gets us where we need to be. So use that, okay. I have no idea how much like current this is gonna draw. Well, I guess I could do a quick Ohm's law thing. Let's do that. It's gonna be roughly 24 volts over the 120 ohm resistor. So V equals IR, so 24 point, let's say 24.5 divided by 120 equals 0.2 amps. 
Wow, that's quite a lot. It won't actually be that much. So I'm just thinking like worst case scenario. I'm trying to figure out like what's the absolute worst case for power dissipation. So... Point 0.2 amps, and then what's the power formula? It's voltage times current, right? VI, so point 0.2 times 24. It's 4.9 watts. I don't think that's really an option. <laughs> Just get a really big one and hope for the best. Yeah, I think you just get a really big one and hope for the best. I don't realistically think that it'll be pulling that much, but we're just going to get a rather sizable one. Yeah, it looks like 12.06 is a good... Pricing options could be expensive. Panasonic, this one right here. Probably stands the best chance of being in stock. 2.32 kilo ohm. All right, let's see if we can find it. Part. Not favorites, sorry. Yay, and it's already made. Thank you. Taking the small victories. <laughs> All right, we can turn the name off and rotate it. I thought I'd turn the name off, but maybe not. All right. Whew, stay focused. Excuse me. Now we need the 120 ohm resistor. Let's take off the resistance here. This is a pretty common value. At least it should be. Yeah, a lot of 1206 size parts. <laughs> uh, give me something cut tape. This one right here. it is 120 ohm resistance is used as the terminating resistance on the CAN bus on cars you can go look that up on uh, Wikipedia or something and see that those notes on that but that's why it's really common it's common in automotive or one of the reasons why it's really common Okay, now we need res or capacitors. And it looks like we can use the same one on both sides. It's 10 microfarads. Ceramic cap should do just fine. We just need something that can stand a lot of voltage.
What even is this? First thing that pops up. <laughs> All right, in stock, active. Scroll down, 10 microfarads. And we need something rated for 35 or higher. Well, yeah, we're using 28. We should be fine. All right, and then I think we're going to pick a rather large part. 0805 seems to be the smallest, but I think we should just get something a little bigger. 22. A lot of those. Wow. Four of those, one of those. So that seems to be the most. And even then, it's still obnoxious. All right, and then we want this in cut tape. Fifty cents, pretty sizable part. I like it. What are the chances it's already exists? Nope, it doesn't. This is going to be a little harder to find, so I'm just going to have to start going down the list. We might have to switch over and just get some can caps to uh, make it easier. If I don't find something ever, very quickly. Nope. Nope. Hey, that one's in stock. Or exists. And there's quite a few of them in stock, so. Okay. So we need two of these. goes there and that goes there look at that and it's regulated <laughs> all right Let's drop this above this no I'm trying to figure this out hang on there we go <laughs> okay So now, somehow, oh, huh. we got to get all this wired up. All right, so yeah, this is going to be semi-complicated, but I think we can get there. Just need to look up the circuit real quick. And then we need our gain to be like five probably. Ugh. Ugh. 
So first things first, our power. All right, and then what do we, we have DC 26 volts. to see I just realized the capacitors that it was recommending I use the values might be kind of big oh no 15 picofarads and 39 picofarads okay those are just going to be uh, basic caps then ceramic caps so 805s All right, and then we need to connect to ground all of this VCC minus and one of these TRS lines. I don't remember which one. And we are going to have to really heat sink this because it's going to generate a lot of heat. Okay, now which of these TRS lines? Hold on, I think I have another copy of this data sheet pulled up. Here we go. Line eight. I believe eight should be connected to ground, TRS2. So uh, the second one here. Let me just verify that though. Okay, yeah, TRS2 is connected to the ground. On all of these. TRS1 will be a control line. We are probably going to run out of... Oh man, I'm going to have to get a 
sizable little micro to run all this. I was gonna get a just a. I was thinking just getting another uh, uh, Teensy because I could easily just power the five volts and everything off it. It's just kind of all in one solution. I wanted to try a toy around with another micro, but I think a Teensy is honestly the makes the most sense at this point. Everything else would be pretty time consuming. I was gonna get a four O, but I think I need to get a four point one, or I'm gonna have to with all the I O that's required here. All right. And then TRS-1. TLD is from 3 demo where two volts above TRS-2 place in the TLD. 2.2 milliamps. So it's dragging it low. Interesting. There probably needs to be a relay or something that shuts these off. Like, just cuts all the power if there's no, like, 5 volts plugged in. All right, uh, what's next? Our outputs, those need to be tied together and just pushed out. Well, hang on. go all right and then we need to label these and I guess like channel one pop out because we're gonna have several layers right after the fuse and whatnot and after the relay All right, let's see. Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. My phone turned off, so I didn't see your comments, Terrence. Those are the op amps. Can you use a power MOSFET? Uh, yes, but these are so I can have an adjustable output voltage. Hopefully, I don't know how long ago you asked that question, but hopefully they uh, that answers it. If you have a reason that I'm wrong, though, I'm all ears. Uh... Okay. So now for standard op amp, we have to do the voltage divider on in on the in minus. And we need a gain of 5 and probably low resistance values. Oh, turning something off at five volts wasn't there. Yeah, sorry, um, absolutely, yeah, that's a, a pretty much what I was thinking of doing, uh, is just having a MOSFET or a solid state relay that when you, when it, because I'm plugging this into the wall and that has, you know, is running, um, uh, and I can think of it, the 28 volts coming in, right? Once it gets to, and by the time it gets to this, it's probably around 26. Uh, but then the micro and everything is going to be powered off the USB. And because of the way this, some of this stuff works, these things can't shut down unless the lines are held high. So it needs some sort of voltage coming in. So I want to just do it so that when the USB, or like if the USB isn't plugged in, it just cuts the power to everything. So yeah, I will use a power MOSFET or a, uh, uh, solid state relay for that. I was leaning more towards the relay just because it has to be able to handle a few amps of current. And that's easier to, f I think it would be easier to find a relay for that. Okay. So, non inverting op amp. Gain is 1 plus R2 divided by R1. We need a gain of 5. Uh, 120 ohms is a great resistance value we found already, so let's see if we can keep using that. So 120, so 480, wouldn't it be? Or it was one plus. Yeah. Okay. So I think. Uh... <laughs> Are you uh, saying that a lightning struck close to you, or that I should uh, account for lightning striking close by when I have this device plugged in? <laughs> Oh, in Kentucky, all right. Oh, I just totally, this totally just popped into my head, sorry. Uh, but PSA for anybody that, uh, especially all of you listening that have Twitch's, Twitch accounts right now, uh, there's been rumors that Twitch has been hacked and a lot like a, a lot of data has been breached. So uh, if you get it, when you get a chance, I would recommend changing your Twitch password. And if you don't have it set up, set up multi-factor auth authentication. I don't think they, uh, from the rumors that I've heard, they may have lost uh, password hash values, right? So the, the other side of that. 
the resulting hash from the password, but because uh, obviously they don't store the real password. But I don't think they lost stream keys. So if you're a streamer, I don't think you have to re get a new stream key. Uh, but anyone that has an account should change their password just to be safe. Amazon hasn't confirmed yet whether or not they uh, got, actually got hacked and what was lost. I think they're still investigating. Okay. Um, what am I? So I said 120 and 480, right? So let's just go find these things. And that should give us a gain of five. I think we can go ahead and already use the 120 ohm that we already have. Here, I'm just gonna save all this real quick since I've done a lot. Give me just a sec, this will take a second to save. And then I'm gonna go find that 120 ohm we've already used and use it here. Well, hopefully my stream is not failing. Oh yeah, my internet took a dive. It might be spotty here for a second. <laughs> there it goes. All right. So in our DC power, I think it was this one. Yep, that's the part. All right, so we need four of these. I think that's actually going to be okay right there, yep. And then this connects to ground on this side. Let's just connect it right here. There we go. All right, let's bring that in. Bring that in. All right, and then we need 480 ohms. So let's find that. Let's 
stock active. I hope 480 is a standard value. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> oh, that's mill ohms. Never mind. Hold on. They have 41. That's not very popular. 475 is, though, close enough. All right. I think we're going for big ones. Uh, oh, please. Oh, wait, oh, fives is the most, but not by a whole lot. So let's just try and get these. Wow, these are kind of pricey. Oh, that one's only 10 cents. Okay, let's try that. Oh, and it's already made. Good. All right. And then we just need a few of these. So 425 means they're slightly less than 5 gain, which is fine. We can always go smaller on the other resistor if we have to. Or sorry, 475. All right. What's always the problem with a non-inverting op amp? All right, so this is the control line, so that just needs to be uh, uh, to an I.O. Oh yeah, getting a precise gain. Yeah, I'm kind of concerned about that too because there's a uh, like the resistors too have tolerances, right? And you know, like everything has a tolerance and varies quite a bit. And as the temperature changes too, especially on something like this pushing a lot of current, uh, it's going to change temperature. I think whatever software I write to control this thing, I should have a calibration mode 
where I allow you to use like a multimeter and basically test each channel and type in the value that it says. It'll put out a certain voltage and you type in what the multimeter reads as. And then, uh, and then it will run through some transfer function and, you know, fix the outputs accordingly. All right, so channel one, we said amp enable. For the most part, I'm using 5% in some cases, just for cost reasons. 1%, it should be, it should be really close. 5% would be, there could be issues. Worst case scenario, I'll, if I find I can't make it work with the 5%, I'll get one of those hot air rework stations and I can pull the resistors off and then just put 1% on. And then for the uh, voltage control, I don't think... <coughs> Excuse me. There's a, this schematic's already really busy, so I'm not going to try and fit the potentiometers on here. So I'll just make a line called voltage control. We'll put another. We'll put that on another schematic, another page. Getting close. I still need to get the uh, compensation uh, capacitors on there. Channel four, e control. All right, so that's good. So the only thing that's not connected is the compensation for capacitors. There's probably an argument to be made for putting capacitors on the outputs as well, and maybe even the inputs. So. Oh, and on the VCC plus definitely. We probably need a decoupling cap on each of those. All right, so for the, um, well, this is gonna be kind of annoying to work with. Hold on. Let's just move this down on each of these. All right. Capacitor. 
decoupling cap or our, our compensation capacitors. We need a 15 picofarad and a 39 picofarad. If I remember correctly, 15 is a common value. I'm assuming 39 is as well. It might be 38. I don't think I've ever used capacitors this small in a project. At least in any of my hobby projects. All right, in stock, active, and then we want 15 pico. Oh yeah, that's a common value, okay. They better come in a big enough chip though. There we go. And then I have no idea what kind of voltage is gonna be on this thing. It looks like it could be quite a bit though, so. Uh, I just need to handle whatever the output is. So voltage rated needs to be 25 or better. Okay. Let's get the lowest price. Get any, remove anything that's bulk. A lot of 10 cent capacitors. Wow, these get kind of expensive fast, actually. I usually buy Panasonic stuff, but... Oh, that's not even an option here. That's kind of weird. I'm gonna get this Yagio one. Actually, I'm gonna buy whatever one already has a model made. <laughs> That's probably where my uh, my plan should be. There we go. Okay, this one does have a model made. 5%, 50 volt, 0805. Ah, oh, shoot. Does this go between 1 or 2? <laughs> I don't know. Let's just play some and see. All right, 15 picofarad goes between pin 16 and pin 1, so between comp 1 and comp 2. Oh no. Okay. So this goes between comp one and comp two. And then the other one goes between uh, comp two and V out, or the output. So all the way around. <laughs> How they've done this is a little annoying, but
Okay. So now we need a 39 picofarad. Take the capacitance off and then... Oh, it is a common value. Okay, I had that wrong. All right, and then once again, just find the thing that is most likely to already be made. Like this one. <laughs> and then I guess I'm going to work around the bottom here. Um, yeah. Uh, hold on. There we go. It seems like on the actual chip, the way these pins are lined up uh, will make a lot of sense. Which is good because with the uh, the heat sink ground plane that we're gonna have to do and all that, it's gonna be a lot. There we go. All right, those are in place. Now, decoupling caps. All right, so it wants a 220 microfarad and then a 100 nanofarad. For reasons that I guess are, hold on. Why does it want that? And we might want to go double because we're putting the ground of ECC minus. So between that and the ECC plus, we probably want 440 microfarads and 200 nanofarads. I'm wondering if that doesn't have to do some high frequency, low frequency thing just because it has such a high range. That's why they put two. Because they don't put any notes. Yeah, it does. Okay, so good decoupling informants. And it provides high frequency. So it is low frequency and high frequency. Uh, 
All right. So let's find the the ceramic capacitor first, because that would be easier. If it's for high frequency, it, we probably should keep the same values then, rather than uh, like the the bigger one, we get a a bigger capacitor, like 440 or something, but the ceramic one, the smaller one, we get a uh, this one. We just stick with 100 nanofarads, but maybe 440 for that one. All right, capacitance. One hundred nanofarads is point one microfarads, yes. All right, once again. All right, it looks like I have one that shows I've clicked on it before, so I wonder if I've used it in another project. I'm hesitant. Actually, you know what? I need to. I think for this one. What is it? Yeah, I need to be using 50 volt tolerant or more. It's going to be a little pricier, but. I think we basically have to, though, just in case. Otherwise, I will blow one. All right. Please be made. No. Let's try another one. Dang it. <laughs> this is what I get for trying to use parts from the same company. This kind of stuff happens all day. There it is. I'm looking for this little green symbol. That means that a foot, somebody has already made a footprint and a, uh, uh, sorry, schematic symbol. Hang on. There's multiple footprint options here, so I'm going to see what they are. This might kill the internet momentarily, though. Wow, they all look the same. <laughs> all right, decoupling. We want it right here. This is going to be a really expensive project. Okay. And then this connects there. All right, now we just need one more. Capacitors, and we want electrolytic. 
I believe we won Electrolytic. There's probably a note in here somewhere that'll tell us. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Aluminum Electrolytic General Purpose. Yep. Okay. So we were talking about doing 440. How common is that versus 220? Wow, there's a lot of 220. <laughs> All right, so we probably want something around that. That could work. Yeah, looks like 430 is a pretty common value. In stock, active, or not actually, if you just add a few filters. All right, we'll just go with 220, then it'll probably be fine. Voltage rated. 28 and higher. Oops. Okay, and then let's just go off price. And tape and box, bulk bag, bulk bag, cut tape. These are getting a little, these get a little expensive. That and we don't have like a solid idea of which ones are already already exist in Circuit Maker. So let's find out. This will probably be a little tricky to find one. We might have to just wait till next. I'm running out of time here. Wait till next time and uh, make one. Yep. That's what it's looking like. All right. I'll come back to this, and next time we'll make one uh, part for it, and then we'll be done with the op amps. Probably. We should probably <clears throat> probably still put a capacitor on the uh, output. There kind of is with the compensation thing, actually, though. Well, either way, we should probably still put one on the output just to smooth things out a bit. And then, uh, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, my voice is drying out. All right, well, thank you for everybody that joined me tonight. I had fun. We got a lot done, and I'm looking forward to Tuesday. Work on this some more. As a reminder, I have my uh, PCBs for the, the light-up sign project, so as soon as we get this done into a state where we can order parts, then I will start working on that one, building it. And, uh, yeah, that'll be cool. All right, y'all have a good night.